Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm going to show you how I built my Balsa DC3. So this is a Dare DC3 by Brodak. It's a 60 inch Balsa kit. All the wood, vacuum form pieces, full size blueprints, and step by step directions are on the box. This is the plane. It's all ready to go, ready to fly right now. Uh, I built it all just how the directions call for, other than I added a light kit and I also added retracts. So in order to get started, you just need to purchase the kit and then go down to your local hobby store, get some hobby uh, thin set, medium set glue, and then some pins so you can pin the balsa wood down to your full size blueprint plants. Uh, that will get the fuselage and the wing built. Uh, and then after that, you're gonna need some other stuff like you need uh, some, uh, I got a hanger nine heat iron and a hanger nine pro trim tool and a heat gun, and I also got a journal tool, which made it a lot easier for sanding some of the wood pieces and the glue. Uh, once I get out on the field, I'll be using a Spectrum DX6 controller, and I'll be flying it on a 3-cell 22 milliamp 35C battery. Okay, so the first step is to take all the balsa wood out, plans, read through all the directions and make sure you have all the pieces that the kit comes with. And now I'm just starting to build all the pieces, starting with fuselage. In this step, it's really important to make sure that you have everything nice and square. And now that I have the basic shell built for the fuselage, I'm just going to put a few of the stringers on to make it a little stronger while I keep working with it. I don't want to put all the stringers on until I finish putting the rudder and elevator servos and brackets in place. It's much easier to access the middle of the fuselage with not all of the stringers on. And here I'm installing the bracket to hold the rudder and elevator servo. In this step I'm soaking this balsa wood to create the bent pieces that go for the rudder, elevator, and the wingtip. I cut these pieces of foam out of my foam board that I'm building the plane over. Once you have soaked the wood and taped them on, put a little glue on, then you just put them in the microwave for a few seconds and let them dry and then they stay in that bent shape. As you can see there, that top piece on the rudder is one of them I just made. And you just put it on there and cut it to size and glue it in place. And there's
there's the finished rudder. Now I'm gonna start working on the elevator. start working on the elevator and rudder servos. I use all high-tech servos for this build. These are HS81s. And here I'm going to start working on the tail wheel. All these brass pieces and metal come with the kit. You just have to drill holes and file the pieces down. And then here I'm just going to solder this collar on to the brass piece and then put the tire on and solder the two pieces of metal together. This is a one inch rubber tail wheel. And now that I have all the pieces I need to install into the fuselage, I'm going to start to add the rest of the stringers onto the fuselage. And now the next part of the build is I'm going to start to assemble the wing. Build it in three separate sections. You start with the middle section and then build the left and right sides and then glue them all together. So here I'm cutting out all the laser cut pieces and gluing the middle section of the wing together.
and now that I have the three piece of the wing built, I'm going to build these little foam braces that will hold the two wing tips at the correct height so that it'll have a dihedral. And then I'll glue the two end parts of the wing to the center part of the wing. Now the next part, I'm going to start to build the flaps. There's three sections of flaps. And now that I have the wing built, it's time to start working on the nacelles. But before I build the nacelles up, I'm gonna work on my landing gear. So I decided to build a retractable landing gear. It comes with a fixed gear. This is a fully custom built, designed uh, retracts. The retracts you can buy online and stuff, they don't really fold up the way that the traditional uh, DC3 gear retract. Um, I did find one set, but they weren't to the right scale. Uh, so I just decided to uh, make my own. I just went to a local hardware store and found some wire and some uh, brass tubing and just soldered up my own uh, landing gear. And I ended up using just one uh, full-size high-tech servo to retract both gear just to save on some weight. This is kind of a lighter weight build, so I didn't want to add too much weight to it, so I just used one servo to retract both gear. And now that I have the gear built, I'm going to start to work on the actual nacelle. I actually build it kind of how the plans call for it, and then I start to use and just cut apart the nacelle as I need to, and then just rebuild the parts I need to to make it uh, make the covering fit nicely. As you can see there, I'm starting to cut it there with the Dremel tool and take away the pieces that I need to. And then this front part I actually had to move it forward about a quarter inch or so to make room for that tire to fit uh, in that area. The directions call for a two and a half inch wheel. I ended up putting a, a two and three quarter inch rubber wheel. And so now I have most all the pieces built for the actual airplane. I'm just starting to kind of go through all the pieces and fine tuning each little part and do any fine sanding and just adding small parts here and there to finish the, the entire build. on the aileron and flap servos I used for HS55 servos. I use the older traditional way of uh, just using caulking to install the servos. And now I'm just working on, uh, it comes with these plastic uh, pilots 
for the flight deck and I just cut them out and glued them together. And there I'm working on that uh, plastic covering that goes for the uh, flight deck area and then just uh, use model paint to paint all that. And there's a full size servo for the retractable landing gear. And I just built my own bracket to install that here in the center part of the fuselage. And now I'm just adding the lights. The light kit that I ordered came with five millimeter lights and they were just a little too big of lights for the wingtips for the strobe and the nav. So I uh, cut those off and re-soldered on some three millimeter uh, LED lights there for the wingtip. And then I used the five millimeter lights that it came with for the landing light and the beacon. I wanted to make it nice and easy to remove the fuselage from the main part of the wing. So I uh, color coded all the servo extensions there so it's really easy just to pull off all the servo wires and then uh, just color code each uh, heat shrink together and uh, makes putting the taking the wing on and off very easily and now I'm preparing to uh, put the engines in I put um, 450 size brushless uh, motors on it Another part that I uh, did a little different than the plans call for. I didn't like the uh, plastic bubble that it came with for the nose cone, so I just went ahead and built up my own uh, design there for the nose. I was able to shape it perfectly to the way that the lines of the airplane uh, made it look, so uh, and then I just covered it with, uh, uh, with the ultra coat that I used. And I'm, uh, I got it all wired together, just making sure everything works correctly and all the engines work and all the servos are working how they should uh, before I go ahead and cover it. And so now I uh, went through and sanded all the pieces and made sure everything was nice and smooth and. Uh, now it's time to do all the covering. So I just start with the uh, rudder and elevator and, uh, and then use, go to the fuselage and then uh, the wings last part that I did.
then now that I have all the covering done, it's time to start adding the decals. I want the Delta paint scheme, classic DC3. Thank you guys for watching my video. Uh, go ahead and subscribe and I'll uh, upload some uh, videos of the Maiden Flight. And uh, here's uh, pictures of it all finished up.